for the past 35 years, Sun Noodle has been facilitating the ramen boom that swept the US. I mean, these guys provide noodles for hundreds of restaurants across the US, Europe, and even in South America. They built the factory first in Hawaii, then in California, and later in New Jersey, which when combined, they make over 200,000 servings per day. That's crazy. But in 1981, the company actually started out humbly making Simon, the staple noodle of Hawaii. It's similar to ramen, but the noodles are made using a flour that's higher in ash and egg that give these noodles much more flavor and a firmer texture. So the recipe dates back to the plantation era in Hawaii. It's a perfect example of the type of food that can only come together out of the blend of immigrant cultures that exist here on the islands. It's like a blend of Chinese, Japanese, and Portuguese in a bowl. How's it going, Shia? Hey, man. Let's see, man. Thank see you for having me. So yeah, welcome to Sun Noodle. When we go make, make one tons at home, it's always Sun Noodle brand. <laughs> all of, you know, you're very much a part of the Hawaii culture. How did Sun Noodle end up in, in Hawaii? Uh, my grandfather had a noodle factory in Japan. My dad was 19, wanted to, you know, explore the world. Yeah, he came here with one machine, kind of one suitcase story. Yeah, yeah. And then started a little noodle operation and you know, went door to door to each uh, restaurant that he could. Couldn't speak English and so had to use it by you know, showing the noodles. And that's how you know, Sun Noodle started. Since in Hawaii we have you know, Chinese, Filipino, all kinds of uh, culture. This factory makes more than just Japanese noodles. We make chow mein, chow fun, wonton, gyoza skins. It's very diverse. And so he came here expecting to sell more ramen noodles. But as we know it, uh, there's like a Simon shop at every restaurant. And so he learned how to make Simon noodles uh, by speaking to the local chefs. I would say a majority of our products that we make uh, out of this factory is Simon. Like I grew up eating Simon my whole life mm -hmm. and I still don't know what the roots of Simon is. Is it Chinese? Is it Japanese? <laughs> is it Okinawan? For a lot of people, the plantation is where you had a mix of Japanese, Chinese, Portuguese, Filipino people living on the same uh, you know, house. And so I think it's a blend of different people coming together to create a, a bowl of soup noodle. But the biggest difference for the noodles, the uh, Simon is a lot grayer or darker in color and ramen is a lot more yellow. For our Simon noodles, we use a flour that has a lot more ash content, okay. so much more flavor. And that's why it's a little bit darker. So chef, we're gonna hand cut our one time. Four by four. I'm ready. I'm gonna make like I'm gonna cut the whole thing. <laughs> oh man, I already screwed this up. But okay. this is this is the only factory that does the wontons? Yeah, thing. out of all three for us. These are only very special if the customer wants it. All the products that they're making here today is for the local market. Oh, okay. All the Simon shops in uh, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. I love that they're still at that aspect of it, you know, being oh, hand cut. Yeah. The reason why we're a little bit different from other new manufacturers is because we're very chef driven. We listen to what the chef is wanting and then we come back to the factory and try to recreate a noodle that works for them. And that's how we kind of built our business here in Hawaii. Uh, by 2004, we moved to uh, California because uh, a local ramen shop from Hawaii wanted to open in uh, Southern California. So rad. That opportunity now has given us to grow on, on the mainland. Where's like the craziest places your noodles has traveled? For me, growing up in Hawaii, but seeing a Sun Noodle truck delivering in Manhattan <laughs> yeah. has been uh, pretty amazing. I repped that 808, bro. <laughs> now you're selling noodles to all of these hipster ramen spots in, in all of New York and all of that. How was it growing up with your dad and all of that? Oh, just a true entrepreneur. You know, that work ethic, you can see him um, you know, in the factory. Fixing and helping people, I think, is where a lot of people respect him. From here all the way to New York City, yeah. What's the next 35 years? We've started to export to Europe now uh, in seven different countries. Ramen and you know just noodles in, in general is very popular. But one thing I think for sure that my father wants to do before he retires is get Simon more in the spotlight on the mainland. Yeah, man. We're in the heart of Kalihi, where Palace Simon is one of the oldest customers for Sun Noodle. Home for 70 years to locals where they come and get a bowl of the most comforting thing in the world. You only find Simon here in Hawaii. It's, it's a blending of so many different cultures, but it's all coming together just like how the people here in Hawaii put into a bowl, and in the end, you get something delicious. I grew up eating Simon for breakfast. I didn't even know what cereal was. The noodles are cooked perfectly, still crunchy. 
The broth is light, it's clear, perfect amount of salt, pork in the background. Simply topped with char siu pork and green onions. That to me, that's heaven. Simon's one of the foods that when you eat it, it doesn't go to your stomach. Somehow it finds its way to your eyelids. And it's sitting right here. You have a pillow? No. <laughs> I'm gonna choose Simon over ramen any day. Ramen's trendy. Simon is life. Life goes. <laughs> you can see the ham in these pigs. You can see the shoulders. You can see the there's an arc in the back where the loin is.